Hello and welcome to The Meet Improv with me, Josh Simpson. And me, Jake Jabor. The Meet is the improv and storytelling podcast where we bring on comedian guests to tell true meaty stories from their lives. And then we use those stories for inspiration for long form comedic scenes. Hopefully. Hopefully. Uh, Hopefully and imp- comedic. <laughs> and improvised, we should also yeah, mention. they're <laughs> improvised. <laughs> uh, we'll get it on, on number 218. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> uh, um, great. We also have a Patreon, patreon.com slash The Meet Improv, where Jake and I upload a weekly extra bonus episode talking about improv stuff, technique, mm-hmm. teaching, all that stuff, things that are on our mind. And you get access to our Discord channel. And that's it. So let's introduce our show. Um, today we have three guests. Oh my Lord. Whoa. It's a quarantine first, everybody. I think we can even call it that. Um, all returning guests. So let's just introduce them. Uh, our first guest, uh, a teammate of mine on assembly at the UCB theater. If that, <laughs> assuming that is still <laughs> around in a year, uh, um, Deb Tarika. Welcome Deb. Hi. Thanks for Hi, having Deb. Me. Hi. <laughs> um, Next, uh, from UCB Herald Night, Mary Anthony. Oh, thank you for having me. I'm excited. Hi, Mary. <laughs> Thanks for being on. Um, and our third guest uh, has been on a couple times this year um, in a real life doctor, <laughs> an emergency room doctor. Uh, uh, came on early on in the uh, stay at home portion of the quarantine now we're sort of just living life baby <laughs> uh, it's brian dr brian uh, i believe is what we call him here on this podcast uh he has a full name but we call him dr brian uh welcome brian thanks no, for coming thanks back for around. Me again. Thanks Hi, brian. <laughs> um so yeah we're gonna spend the first part of this little podcast kind of catching up with brian i'm curious last time we talked to you it was sort of we were heading into the coronavirus was sort of new we took we peeled you away from the emergency room and said talk to on this improv comedy podcast about what the heck is going on um you were i think it was the same week i was actually texting you being like can i go to the movie <laughs> yeah, that's right <laughs> and you asked if you should shave your beard <laughs> yeah, I did. And as you can see the listeners can't I did not shave my beard. Uh, uh, your answer was that it was a, it could be a coronavirus catcher. Like it would be a filter. Yeah, well, I mean, for the, for the masks, it's better too. I'm going to shave before I go in tonight. So I've been off for about five days. So yeah. Oh, I see. Damn. So when I'm wearing a mask with a beard, I'm just looking no, like an no, idiot. That, no, it doesn't matter I, for that. It's more for the, the hospital mask that N95 cause you don't, you don't get a good seal when you got a beard. Yeah. Can we weigh in on mm-hmm. this though? Okay. Yes. Can please. we weigh on, on whether Josh was done with a mask with his beard? <laughs> I haven't seen it, so I can't, I can't weigh in, but I just wanted to know if I had the option. You can weigh in, always. Uh, <laughs> most people have voted. I'm. It's a major improvement. <laughs> uh, I, li- I like your face. Oh, thank you. Uh, I like the beard, too. I'll stay out of it. <laughs> well, now I like the weigh-ins. Um <laughs> Uh, so yeah, last time we talked, this kind of was all starting. I know that there's been a, what, we're three months into it now. So, um, we've got a few minutes. Um, what's up? <laughs> uh, uh, what is your, so you, you, you told me bef- like off the mics that the, you, you got very busy, what, like a month yeah, ago? Yeah, it ramped up really quick. It wasn't. I live just outside DC in Virginia. It's not like it was in New York or in Seattle, but we got very busy very quickly with a lot of sick people all at once. Um, but seeing what happened in the other places, we were able to keep up with it. Um, we, but we were always sort of, we felt like we were a few weeks away from running out of materials constantly, but we never quite got there. Thank God. Um, but yeah, maybe a month ago we were at the phase where we were just getting just there, there's not a lot of patients, but they all had it and they were all sick. Yeah. Gotcha. So the ones that came in were like more severe, is what you're saying, the people that bothered Yeah, yeah. And all the people who would come in for other things just weren't coming in. All we were seeing was coronavirus. I mean, I work in a trauma center. There were no trauma patients. People stopped shooting each other. People stopped stabbing each other. It was just coronavirus. (laughs) 
<laughs> you know, I mean, the, everybody was at home not being violent. It was really, really odd. And it was just <laughs> coronavirus in our ER. Was there like, <laughs> I guess you can't say, <laughs> but like I, early on in this, I like was exiting my front door and I like stepped on my front stoop wrong and I twisted my ankle what I thought was yeah, yeah. very badly. And I'm like, I fell oh, uh, with, <laughs> I looked like an asshole, but I fell and I was like, if I have to go to the ER now, I would feel like a dickhead. I'm assuming there's at least a couple. I, of I mean, idiots. there's some people who are always go in for, for, I mean, acne or whatever, <laughs> but I mean, I, <laughs> what <laughs> you can, you can go in for anything you want. I mean, you can go in. Yeah. I mean, people will come in for, for anything at all, but, um, the yeah, yeah. ER? It's, it happens. I mean, there was some, there was, I mean, yeah, no, I guess I can't say specifically. I mean, one time there was someone there cause there was meat stuck in their teeth. I mean, people come to the hospital for different things, but <laughs> I, we see everybody who shows up. There's the guy with the meat stuck in his teeth, like, <laughs> like next to someone bleeding yeah, out. It, just, like, it happens. Yeah. Me. <laughs> That wasn't during coronavirus, but I mean, you know, it's still, you can go there for anything at all and you'll be seen and treated. I mean, that's the good part of it, but you can be seen for anything at all. Huh. I would never think to go to the ER for that. But who am I? Is that your dog? Okay. That's my dog. That's what's my, what's my, oh. <laughs> I forgot to apologize in advance for my dog. <laughs> oh, no worries. Uh, I'm a dog. I'm a yeah. dog. Uh, <laughs> um, what was the what so that's an interesting tidbit there hasn't been a ton of uh other stuff happening besides coronavirus you told me that like most of the people in your hospital stayed pretty yeah safe, we had right? a uh very few sort of workers got sick where we are a couple people got it one 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 or two people just lost their smell and taste early on and didn't realize that's what it was from but didn't get super sick uh-huh um, and now retrospectively we sort of realize a couple of my friends um, but we didn't, luckily none of our staff got badly ill from it. And I think we only had like a handful that got, that got sick. I mean, we're, we're all being as careful as we can, but it's not a hundred percent. And I think a lot of people are getting sick or getting sick outside the hospital, not in it, even like healthcare people. Yeah. Gotcha. You think that's just the regular precautions you were kind of telling me, uh, but like it's just washing yeah. hands. Yeah. Just wearing a regular masks. mask and washing your hands and just not hanging out in big groups seems, seems to do it. I mean, I'm wearing a regular surgical mask most of the time. And I mean, I've managed to stay okay. Um, mm -hmm. Yeah. I think it's important to do it outside the hospital, but uh, I think that's where things are a little more slippery. What's your feelings on, this is a big question. So yeah. buckle up. Uh, what, what, when you, as like a healthcare worker, when you see the protests, are you like, I know you're in support mm -hmm. of the cause, but are you like worried about the, the physical like the big groups and the, I, with it all, no, you know I, I, yeah, saying, no, right? but people are <laughs> doing it to save lives. And I mean, I said this to you sort of texted, but I went, I saw the protest in DC and outside the hospital, that is the only place that I've seen every single person masked. Like that's the only place I've since this all began that I've seen every single person protecting like the people around them. Yeah. Really? I agree. That's the same thing in LA. I yeah. went to three of them and I was, uh, very, not surprised, but like, I couldn't believe how, how careful everyone was being considering, you know, that it's kind of like a protest is sort of like a, just by nature, like a, you're kind of poking yeah. the system a little bit and you're sort of like, yeah, we're out here. But like everyone was wearing the masks I, besides. Right. No, but yeah, for us too. <laughs> <laughs> people were offering masks at the one I, like the ones I've been to they like people were walking around giving out water giving out masks mm -hmm. like taking yeah, care yeah we had that too outside the White House generally yeah. no I think cool. it's a marker that um the people doing this are people who care about their neighbors I mean it's, it's it reflects it really well yeah yeah um Mary you just traveled <laughs> across the country you you were t t telling us uh yeah. You said New Mexico was, was like, I, I, I noticed just even in protest footage, like sometimes in Minneapolis, you look at the footage and it's like, people are, you know, taking their masks down and talking, yeah. but like in California, it's mostly mask up. I don't know. What were the bigger things you know? Yeah. Well, also this is all my data is based off, you know, 
checking into looking the quintas <laughs> tell us the little la, la quinta stance yeah. um new mexico what i saw it was really good like everyone was in masks people were like even socially distancing like when i checked in at the hotel people were still like respecting the six feet yeah and then i even like picked up i think some food or coffee at some point it was the same it was like very strict gloves and all the workers masks everyone was spaced out um that was new mexico and then arizona was like it was it felt like nothing was happening it was crazy it was like clearly families were going on vacation no one was in masks not the kids not the parents uh i asked the employee and she was like oh we're at full capacity tonight in this hotel like we're all sold out um Mm -hmm. It was crazy. And then I stopped to get lunch on the way and it was the same deal. No one was in masks. Like, uh, so it was interesting just comparing the two. And then California, obviously everyone was in masks, very strict. Um, at least the places I've been to when I've done pickups or different stuff, it seems pretty, pretty strict here. Like everyone's following it. Yeah. I think if you're employed, you got to be doing it. Yeah. (laughs) Walking on the street is a different story. So, so, I mean, I, you were traveling across the country, but if the, if the La Quinta Inn in Arizona is packed to capacity, (laughs) that means people from other places are coming to stay at a place where they're not requiring you to like wear masks or like it's (laughs) like people are traveling to those destinations oh, yeah you're right that's bad and in this one <laughs> it's close to the grand canyon because i stayed in uh, flagstaff i i didn't go by because i was like i, I don't know uh <laughs> <laughs> so I, was like, I don't feel like seeing a vast canyon by myself in a map <laughs> <laughs> mm-hmm. well, I, didn't feel, I feel like it would be the opposite of like awe inspiring it would just be like oh my god um but yeah you're, you're exactly right it was like it was at full capacity all these people clearly came from far away to into the grand canyon swimming in the pool too the pool was open but the only thing was that it closed a little bit early she was like unfortunately the pool does close at six instead of nine. <laughs> <laughs> Brian, what are your thoughts on pools? I, I don't, I don't know. Yeah. I mean, I don't know. When I worked with Ebola in Guinea, we had a pool at the house where we were at, and people swam in it, and I didn't go near it. I mean, I, I, I don't know. I, I'm sort of still afraid of any sort of close contact with people. I'd stay out of a pool, but I have no idea if that's based on science or not. Pools are gross. Yeah, the pools are yeah, gross. Yeah. I agree. Pools yeah. are gross. <laughs> I don't think that's objectively true. I think pools are a wonderful leisure activity. <laughs> well, next time you're in a pool, count the buttholes that are in the water. <laughs> it's more. It's more than yours. It's gross. <laughs> that's crazy. <laughs> um. So, Brian, do you? Your general. I know you're not like a the type of scientist that collects Uh, data, you're more the person on the ground, but, uh, do you, do now that like, I mean, this will probably come out next week. So the, just for you and for the listeners, it's about a week behind, but, uh, um, Los Angeles just opened up. (laughs) Like States are sort of like kind of kicking their feet up being like, we did it. (laughs) Uh, what, what do you, what what would be like what are your thoughts about like the this kind of reopening at this point in time and like uh what would your advice be almost uh to like stay safe is just like despite those measures like i think i think when i'm headed to wisconsin pretty soon and i have a feeling that i'm just going to be the only motherfucker wearing a mask um uh, I don't know, just any general thoughts about like, yeah, I don't, I mean, I think you just, well, the, I, the thing is we know now that you can have it and not feel sick and like shed the virus and give it to other people. So the whole point of wearing a mask isn't just to keep you safe, but it's to keep other people safe. So, but I mean, it also keeps you from getting it. I mean, I, I think even with stuff reopening, you should be wearing a mask as much as possible. And it, it's, it's, it's still there. I mean, nobody's, 
in the hospital is saying it's gone. They're just saying we're past the first peak. I mean, we're going to have another one and another one mm. and another one. And we keep ho hoping that they're slow enough where we keep up. Um, but yeah, I mean, I think you just have to take the same measures. Like if you go out in public, just wear a mask, wash your hands and don't, don't go to big groups of people who don't have masks on. That makes yeah. sense. Do you think I'm a brainwashed sheep? So no, I'm not a brainwashed no, no. sheep. I, I mean, some uh, people, okay. people who get this, I mean, the, uh, most people are okay, but the ones that are bad are really, really bad. Like we should all be trying to keep other people from getting it. Yeah. And, and at least here, the people that are getting it, it's not like wealthy people. It's like the working poor. We're, we're like 60 or 70% of our patients are Latino that have it. Um, it's just really hitting like the poor population in DC. It's a big part of like the black community. Um, yeah. It's just a, if you're people that aren't taking protection are really hurting like the, the poor community and like the minority community. Well, that's a, sorry. <laughs> <laughs> no, it's, yes. it's nice to hear. I mean, it's not nice to hear that, but it is like, um, <clears throat> I don't know, just everything that's happening and things I've been reading about. And I think like putting it in that kind of perspective is helpful to think about. Um, uh, at least for me personally, of sort of recognizing that like in that like that the two are connected, that I think that there's been a lot of like, um, well, people are going out and protesting, uh, which is bringing large groups of people together. But it's also sort of like, A, that's how severe everything is. And B, like, um, that's not an excuse to go out and do other things because essentially wearing your mask and staying in or going out to protest are both actions you can take to sort of like put, pri like, prioritize the safety of like the black community. Yeah, yeah. Uh, at least how, at least how I've been sort of unpacking it and understanding it is like, <clears throat> Um, the numbers are going up and the populations who are being affected by it are the same populations that were going out into the streets to try and like raise the uh, equality yeah. for. No. And I think a lot of people just now just want it to be better. I mean, cause if I, even when I'm in the hospital, the worst shift I ever had there, when I walk out, it doesn't look like that outside the hospital. I mean, the, the rest of the world, the streets are empty. Everything looks fine. I mean, you can't, it's easy to believe that people sort of aren't sick and vulnerable when you're not around them. Um, and I think right now people are convincing themselves that it's okay when it's just definitely not. And I mean, I think it's the same thing for the protests. I mean, people think cause they're not seeing what people are protesting again in their life that they're not, that it doesn't exist. I mean, yeah. Yeah. Those are yeah. wise words, Brian. Thank you. <laughs> Thank you, Brian. <laughs> Um, all right, well, let's, <laughs> let's, let's, let's pull some yucks out of that. <laughs> Hi, um, I don't know if there's an order here in this emergency room, but, um, I imagine that I should be somewhere near the front of the line. Um, Hello, is do I talk to you or is, do we organize ourselves based on? Um, it, yes, yes. I'm sorry. Wh uh, what's the problem? Um, I I have an emergency, a health emergency. Okay. Um, and can, can you fill this form out with your health emergency? I don't have time to fill out a form. <laughs> okay. I had a big dinner and I got a mystery chunk in my mouth. You had, had a, a big dinner. Uh, yeah, I heard that. And you have a mystery chunk in your mouth. Yes. Are you? I broke into a hometown. You... What? <laughs> Am I choking on it? Not yet. <laughs> I went okay. to a hometown buffet. They're not open at this time because of COVID. But I went in. I stirred up some of the ingredients. I brought a couple of my best boys with me, and we made a buffet. Okay. <laughs> You I made your own buffet in an abandoned uh, hometown buffet. It's not abandoned. It's temporarily closed. Don't. Okay. 
Can I talk well, to someone else? This person is sassing me. <laughs> I'm not sassing you, sir, but we've got people with uh, gunshot wounds and uh, people who've fallen out of buildings. Uh, oh, that must be nice to know what's wrong with you because I got mystery meat. I got a mystery chunk in my mouth. And it's not uh, blocking your airways? <sighs> How do I know? <laughs> well, can you breathe? <laughs> Don't... God, is there is there a a, a little suggestion? Excuse me. Yes. Sorry, is this the line? Is this the line for the people with the issues? I oh, uh, Carol. Yes. Carol, I haven't seen you in ages. I were you at the hometown buffet? Yes, I was, but we're supposed to keep it hush hush. Although I did scream it. Well, it's funny, you know. We're talking about food. I'm here. I had. I was having a mimosa early. I was doing the walktails. The walktails. 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 Yes. You drink and you walk around. And I had some lemon rinds in there, and I took a sip, and I swear there's a mystery chunk somewhere in my mouth, or perhaps my nose, because my nose feels zesty. My nose. Feels okay. Zesty. And I just listen. <laughs> Start slapping the desk. We need two of your best doctors. Okay. Yeah. You now. know what? I'm gonna get you in. I'm gonna get you in as best I can. Okay. I'll have you see the next doctor. I assure you, they're just gonna give you a clean bill of health and send you on your way. Okay. I assure you, you're about not gonna have a job once I get done. Yes. Yelping. Yes. Okay. Oh. Well, we got two mystery chunks and whatever the hell else is going on in this. Yes. In this room. Okay, well, I'll have a doctor take a uh, take a look at the two of you together. Okay. okay. Um. Can I? Excuse me. Excuse me. Excuse me. Uh, uh, I I need to uh, I need to see a doctor. This is a real emergency. Okay. Great. What? Uh, oh, Jesus. I'm Here's sorry. Tammy. Yeah. <laughs> Guys, I, I just I want to catch up with you, but I don't have time right now. Um, yeah, we don't either. I was eating a giant rib, like one of those giant ribs from Hometown Buffet, except not real Hometown Buffet because it's closed right now and you get it. So we made our own at home and I was eating a giant rib the size of my head. Okay. And I think I have a hair stuck in between two of my teeth because it's not, it's not meat. I have something that's stuck. It's in the back okay. where I can't get it. And I, uh, uh, I tried to pull at it a little bit. It could be a splinter. I don't think I've been eating wood, so I don't think it's a splinter. But there's something that's stuck in in the back of my mouth mm -hmm. right there. She is and unbearable. It's, it is a hair. I'm pretty sure it's a hair. And I need a doctor to extract it okay. before I die. Okay. I, I'm going to prescribe you some floss. I'm actually going to prescribe all three of you floss. Are you a doctor? I'm die? <laughs> What'd you say? Are we I couldn't die? hear. Are we gonna die? Are we gonna die? You're I know not Tammy's gonna die. Not. Yes, Tammy probably right. saw both of our <laughs> both of our BMWs pull up to here, and she and she just followed us from her house. How dare you? No, oh, what, Tammy? Do you You're, see it? Look, I'm gonna open my mouth. You can probably see it. It's probably just a big clump of hair. I don't know. God. Oh. Okay. That is a nasty mouth. No wonder Roy left you. Oh. <laughs> Oh my God, that's mean. We see the three of them like pull up chairs and they all pull out little locktails and start having brunch in the waiting room. <laughs> we might as well have drinks. I we... don't think that's a problem. Uh, if you're able to do that, you probably are fine. You're okay. Hey. Oh, I'm One swallowing these... on my left side. Thank you very much. There's a lot of, can you tell some of these crying children to shut up, please? Can really I tell, ruining the ambience? Tell can I tell crying up. children to shut up? Yeah. And also to stop bleeding? Uh, I don't think so. We had a school bus tip over uh, <laughs> and there's a bunch of kids. What's uh, stuck in their teeth? Well, where were they going? There's no school now. What were they doing in a school bus? I mean, I think, when you know, when you point the finger, there's four fingers pointing back at you, right? I think they're, I agree. Four fingers true. pointing back at you. Okay. And one, well, the thumb is hit. Yeah. Yeah. If you curl the thumb around. Anyways, where's the doctor? Where's the doctor? Where's All right. I'll get you in to see a doctor. Okay. Yes. Do a doctor. Good. <laughs> okay. What do we got here? We got three, com uh, three patients complaining of the same thing. I'm sorry we had to triple you up, but we are um, just overstaffed or understaffed and overworked. Robes, please. 
you should gowns. not have to get naked uh, <laughs> if you can all you can all I would prefer a robe I prefer a robe if you're offering instead of gowns they, they close in the front I'd be more comfortable at the holiday inn we get free just, robes just turn the gown around and it's a robe I'm not gonna I want a linen in the front at the holiday inn we get robes we, at La Quinta we get gowns you know what I mean mm-hmm. This is not a La Quinta or a Holiday exactly, Inn. Exactly, exactly. I'm a Holiday Inn Rewards member. Here's my card. <laughs> that, why would that work here? <laughs> okay. Get uh, the robes. Get the robes. Okay. I, I don't know what to tell you. Here are three gowns that if you turn them around, they're robes. Okay. I'm going to, uh, uh, we are, uh, we don't have enough supplies, uh, but I have some uh, like uh, gauze that you can tie around your waist to keep the robe closed. Okay. You don't need the robe. Um, it sounds like, how you do you know? Have- you haven't diagnosed me yet. Oh God. <sighs> okay. Yeah. By the way, if you have a little more tonic, <laughs> why would I have tonic? <laughs> I don't know. It's a hospital. It's a hospital. <laughs> Why We're would having I have... walk tail. <laughs> okay. I don't know how you drank more of what I assume is the gin and left tonic behind <laughs> or drank more of the tonic and left the gin behind, but I can't refill any of your drinks. Okay. What I can do is take a look uh, in your ears, uh, nose and mouth to see if anything is lodged in there. <laughs> oh, okay. Uh... Okay. Let's see. Okay. Uh, yes. Um, it looks like you had the what appear to be the keys to the uh, hometown buffet. <laughs> oh my God, Carol! That, that is an emergency. <laughs> All right, we're back to the meat part of the podcast where a guest shares a story. But before we get to that, we should say goodbye to our chorus, our field correspondent, <laughs> our boots on the ground. Uh, uh, Brian, Dr. Brian, thank you so much for being on and sharing with us what's going on. And um, always appreciate it. So, yeah, thank uh, you, Brian. Yeah, no, great talking <laughs> to you guys. Uh, looking forward to seeing you again one day when it's okay again. <laughs> <laughs> Brian was supposed to come out and take class, yeah. a UCB class in April. Oh, yeah. no. Took time off yeah. from work and everything. Yeah. Oh. I, I'll take 301 one day. So, yeah, one day. <laughs> <laughs> uh, all right. Well, uh, thanks again, buddy. Uh, we'll talk. I'll talk to you soon. I'll text you with some <laughs> dumb question. Probably Great. this week. Okay. Take care. <laughs> Bye. Bye. All right. See you, man. Thanks. Bye. All right. Um, so now we are into the meat part of the podcast uh, where a guest shares a story. Mary, you're up first. <laughs> okay. Brand new Apple headphones on. <laughs> yes. Great. So crystal clear. Um, cool. Well, um, but what I thought of uh, because of some of, you know, Brian's sharing stuff about working in the ER, what I thought of immediately for today is um, it's kind of a collection of stories about my childhood. My oldest brother, so I'm one of five. I'm the middle. Wow. Two older brothers, younger sister, younger brother. Yeah. A lot going on. A lot of, yeah. Um, but there's this thing in my family. My my oldest brother has sent every single one of us to the ER in some capacity. What? <laughs> <laughs> it's bad. He's a very kind, nice, gentle person, but <laughs> You know, growing up with five kids, you're just you're horsing around, you're playing. But um, so it's kind of a collection of those. He sent my younger brother, Joe, two times. One time I think they were just playing and he pushed him and he had to go to the ER. Another time my parents had just bought the house that we lived in and they were like outside playing with the dirt. But I guess there was like something in the dirt, there was something like it was, there was still like some construction going on and he flicked it in my brother's face. And then my brother had to go to the ER, get his eyes washed out. Oh my <laughs> then God. I, then I, yeah, that's, so that's them. Then I come along. And then when I was about two, maybe like May's age, actually, like I wasn't quite two yet and have like a weird memory of it. I was like walking in my brother's room And I think it was like a summer holiday. I had like a little American flag and (laughs) shouldn't have done this. I had the top of it in my mouth. So it was like two. Yeah, bad. 
And I was walking in looking for him and he had hid under the bed and was going to scare me. And so he grabbed my ankle. This is gross. And when he did, the <sighs> thing went up, uh, yeah, uh, up in the roof of my mouth. Yeah. Uh, and wait, you yeah, fell or something? Yeah. Or you yeah, just he like jerked. grabbed my ankle and because, yeah, I don't even think I fell. I think I just jerked when I did, it went up. And <gasps> oh, it's like one of my earlier memories because I remember running, running into the bathroom and I was just barely tall enough to like see the mirror. And so I remember like looking up and seeing just so much blood. And, uh, and I remember waking up in the ER. So that that's me. There's still more. And then <laughs> my younger sister... I think it was also a horsing around situation. She like fell. They were messing, playing around and she got a scar on her forehead. <laughs> this makes my brother sound so bad. It's just, he just, uh, he's a Whoa. nice person. But, and we were, we were kids. We were all little. And then even on top of that, my youngest brother, Michael, they were like messing, messing around, wrestling or something. And he like chipped his tooth or something on a counter and then he had to go to the ear. So twice for my second oldest brother and then once for each of us, which is oh my God. just, yeah, just utter. I don't know if you guys experience this, but I feel like there's like a second thing that happens when you maybe get in your late twenties, early thirties, at least for me, where I have an amazing appreciation from my parents. And I think that they're kind of like badass because now I watch home videos and like, I realize my mom never yells. She's always just like at this tone, but it is complete chaos, like <laughs> complete chaos. She's like, no, please put the matches down. We're just using those to light the birthday candle. No, Aaron, please get off the couch. Like she never, <laughs> never goes above a certain volume of <laughs> around her is just, and then just thinking about all the, I'm like, that was so expensive to think about all those ER visits and I just, yeah. I'm like, how did my parents, I would be so, I'm so selfish. I'd be so annoyed mm -hmm. if like one of my children was doing dumb stuff like that. Um, <laughs> but yeah, that's not really one story, but more a collection of, of the, the chronicles of, uh, him. <laughs> yeah. With your second, the brother that went twice, were, were those like broken bone situations or sprains or? I'm just uh, curious. No, no broken bones, fortunately. I think it was like the first one, I don't really know, but maybe it was like his arm. Maybe it was a sprain. I don't think anything was ever broken. No broken bones. So maybe some kind of arm sprain, I think. And then the second one was like the eyes where he had to go get like his eyes washed out because of something that got in there. Yeah. A lot of oh, eye stuff. Crazy. <laughs> yeah, a lot of eye stuff. Yeah. What is what's the separation between all the siblings? Like oldest you know what I mean? Um oh yeah. Aaron. So Aaron is two years older than Joe. Joe is two years older than me. And then there's a little gap between me and my sister Anna. We're like three, three, four years, three years. And then Anna and Michael are three years as well. So there's a big gap, obviously, between mm. Aaron, the oldest, and Michael, the the youngest, because he's 25, and I think my brother Aaron just turned 35, 34, 35. Okay, 10 year difference, yeah. Yeah, yeah. That's a different. That's a millennial and a Zoomer right there, right? <laughs> yes, yes, it's true. <laughs> Good. Cover, it's spanning it generations. <laughs> Good on your um, parents. Was there any other combination of your siblings injuring each other? Or was it pretty un universally? <laughs> Honestly, it was pretty universally Aaron. Like he was, he was the, <laughs> he was the bruiser. He was like the, the enforcer. No, he, yeah. Yeah. He, he, uh, he was, he's very, he's very fun. And now he's like so gentle and like reserved and you like wouldn't put it together, but he definitely was the one who would like get too rough. But it's also, I don't know if it's like an Irish Catholic thing. There's like a certain dynamic, like I, and now even emotionally, I have to prepare myself when I go home for it. There's like a certain like 
amount of like pride and ego and <laughs> mm-hmm. like not give, not giving up and also like giving the amount of shit that you're receiving. It's like when I go home for the holidays, I'm like, Oh baby, I'm ready to like tease the shit out of my brothers <laughs> and they're going to tease me. So there's something about that dynamic. I think where it's like in all those stories, none of us were victims necessarily. Like we were, <laughs> we were fully, participating in whatever the the shenanigans were. Um, Yeah. That was my sort of next question of like, were you at an age where um, you would, when you were with your brother, Aaron, were you you a little bit like, uh uh-oh. Like, uh, (laughs) like, were you able to like sort of stack the statistics and go like, Oh no, I'm worried I'm going to get hurt again. Like, did that play into it at all? You would think, but I had the opposite problem being like the only girl for a while. I, I was always like, Oh, I can keep up. I can keep up. Like come at me. I can keep up, which did this whole other thing where they fully would take advantage of that. Like, make me do all the things first. Like if they wanted to like explore this area we aren't supposed to go to, or like see what that bug is or like all this stuff that always be like, you be like, yeah, 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 I will. And then, you know, would always get hurt. So I think it was the, the opposite. It, it like, I was always like, I can do it. I can do it. Right. Yeah. Makes sense. Hey, Aaron, can I talk to you for a second? Yeah, sure. What's up? Um, I, uh, I feel uncomfortable talking to you about this, but I, I have to get something off my chest. Um, you, you've sent all of our siblings to the ER, as you know, um, for various reasons. Back up a little bit. I'm just swinging. I'm practicing my, uh, (laughs) my baseball swing. Well, I'm going to stay close if that's okay with you. Cause I, um, (laughs) I actually wanted to know why you've never sent me to the ER and I, I, I just want to know if it's something I'm doing or if it's, what do you, mean? you don't like me as much. Oh, no, that's not it. I, I, I don't want to send anybody to the ER. Yeah. Things just kind of happen, you know? Uh, uh, well, they, yeah, I know, but they seem to happen a lot to, everybody else and I, I just I've never like I'm standing close to you and you're not hitting me with the baseball bat and like I um I saw like when you like left your marbles out and I like ran across it but then you said watch out I don't want you to get hurt yeah I caught you why would you yeah. run on marbles that was alarming yeah I just it's, I just thought like when is it my time to go to the ER because of you oh well, I, I know that sometimes, you know, as the kid number four or five, you probably feel a little left out, but I, I, I think you should consider yourself lucky. Um, you know, I'm a bit of a ditz, uh, I guess you could call it, say I'm a bit of a, a klutz ditz. I don't, I don't know. I guess however you'd describe it I have clunky feet I, I I'm not super careful but I I love you and I wouldn't want to I wouldn't want to hurt you and uh yeah but you love the rest of our siblings you sent mom and dad to the ER you love mom and dad well that was a huge accident yeah that was a, I, that was a, I hit them with my car when they were biking down the parkway I know I, I wanted uh, to go on that bike ride and you said don't come on that bike Cried. I approach in a full body cast with my <laughs> uh, jaw wired shut. <laughs> hi, Aaron. Hi, uh, hi, uh. Hey, what's up, Taylor? So much. Oh. I just want to say that I love you very much, and I I forgive you for bouncing the bowling ball off of my body. Uh, <laughs> And I just know how much you care about me. Okay, I'm going to go inside. I'm in a lot of pain and sleepy. Go to sleep. I'm begging you. <laughs> he he slips on the marbles that oh. walks away in the body cast. Oh, Why can't you, I be Taylor? You shouldn't have. Oh. <laughs> I didn't even put those marbles out. Those were supposed to be in my room. 
<laughs> Deb scattered scattered them all over the damn Aww. place. But Here. that's a, <laughs> Let's I get him out of the, the foyer. Uh, I I've go. never been I've never been more jealous of Taylor in my life. You shouldn't be jealous. Look at him. Yeah, look at him. He's in a full body cast. He can't even I wipe know. his own ass. Uh -huh. I know. <laughs> I don't mean to be the way I am. All right. You you must you've got a kiss of an angel or something like that. Because you, <laughs> you must have been kissed by an angel, is what I meant to say. It feels like kiss of a devil. No, you've been you've been blessed. You're you're you've avoided my me and my mishaps. It feels like the devil waggled his finger at me and said, You don't get to play with the other kids. You don't get to get the love of Aaron like everybody else. What's love? I bounced a bowling ball off off of <laughs> <laughs> I bounced a bowling ball off Taylor like a basketball. You know, many, you know how deliberate that was. I was so pissed at him. Yeah, I've tried to piss you off. I'm so I'm get, I'm in your face right now. But you gotta, look, at look at me at with your freckles. I'm wiggling my fingers right in your in your nose to make you sneeze. It smells like oranges. <sighs> well, uh, I'm gonna uh, I kicked you. Kick. Hey, come on, stop it, stop Kick. it. Kick. Hey, listen, sport. Kick. Hey, Kick. you know what kicking meant? Have you ever watched Three Ninjas? <laughs> One of my favorite movies. No. Come on, let's get you. <laughs> let's sit you up here in the family room. Yeah, sit me up, up on a chair. Put me on on a really high seat. Yeah. Put the recliner out. Uh oh, I'm slipping off the couch. Oh no, no. you're not. Stay oh, on the no. couch. Stay on the couch. <laughs> There's oh. a popcorn I made for my friends. Oh, oh, hey, hey, hey. Choking on the popcorn. You're not hey. choking on the popcorn. <laughs> <laughs> I could choke on the popcorn and it would be your fault. And then I, I would know that I'm a part of this. Family. I love you. What do I have to say? I'm a, <laughs> I have a very violent streak in me. I bounced a bowling ball off my own brother. I ran, ran to my parents with a Jeep Grand Cherokee. Was there riding their bikes down the parkway? <laughs> I threw one of our brothers in a dumpster and locked it shut for a full week. Oh, as, yeah. as oh, that sounds like a vacation. As he's flailing his arms, expressing his love, he hits his mother directly in the chest when she walks in the room. <laughs> Would you get oh, those titties oh, out of here? Oh, I, oh, <laughs> God. Oh, it's obnoxious, Mom. Oh, my God. I, oh, oh, my clavicle. Oh, oh my clavicle. Great. Your clavicle isn't hurt. I, I'm sorry, Mom, but you parade in here like a... <laughs> like, like a goddamn... What? <laughs> like, like you're in a like you're in the goddamn circus is how you prayed in here like an animal in the circus i i so I, what i used to be in the circus so what so what <laughs> you don't have to bring it up okay well, you don't I'm have your to mother you know what here's and your I, other I, clavicle I, <laughs> <laughs> oh, oh. I, I used to be in the circus mom stop taking my attention <laughs> oh I got. I got to get to the ER, honey. Oh, will, will you? Will you? Uh, will you keep an eye on on your younger sister? I I got to go get this checked out. With pleasure, and I'm sorry about your clavicles, but come on, come on. Why don't we go? Can we all go to the ER? Maybe something will happen to me on the way. <laughs> sure. Well, I'll go to the ER. Everybody, load in the station wagon. Let's go. Let's hey, go. Oh, oh, oh. You don't get to come. <laughs> We see them on the road. The guy, Taylor in the full body cast is on the roof. <laughs> <laughs> hey, I'm right on the roof, you guys. Ugh. I'll get us there as soon as I can. <laughs> <laughs> thanks. Thanks for driving, honey. I just, it's, it's hard to even put the seatbelt over my clavicle. Are you okay back there, Taylor? Yeah, I'm doing okay. Uh, I, yeah. Well, I'm not yeah. wearing a seatbelt either. No, you need to put a seatbelt on. Put a seatbelt <laughs> Let's on. What happens? Let's let it ride. You know. <laughs> they get t-boned. Uh, <laughs> um, Taylor flies out of uh, off the roof of the car into a, <laughs> into a tree, and uh, Deb flies out of the windshield and lands on Taylor. Uh, <laughs> <laughs> uh, 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 you, I love you, Aaron. I'm fine. <laughs> we see that my Aaron is slumped over the steering wheel. <laughs> oh, so now he sends himself to the ER.
Okay, so there's a bomb threat in the building. Um, I don't see any reason that we need to panic or treat it what? like any differently than any other Thursday. What? Um, I said there's a bomb threat in the building. We should get uh, out of the building. Yeah. David, why don't you go to the fridge and get yourself a string cheese? Okay. I don't Take a want a string cheese. I want you to move down. out of the way of the door so that I'm we can no get one's out leaving. Of the-, the worst thing that we can do in a situation like this is lose our cool. So. In times of panic, I am going to be as level-headed as Let's possible. Let's get out as of the here. manager. As the manager of this as- investment firm, I will set an example for all my employees. Now, get a string cheese. Okay, we got the Tillamook no, that you like. I don't want a string cheese. I don't want to die here. Thank I don't want to die here. No I one's going die to die. Work. Just because you talk in, in in a tone like that doesn't mean that there's an actual emergency happening. Yeah. Oh, we're freaking out over here. We don't want to die here. You just You're the one that said string cheese. Now yeah. let's talk about your fear of death a little bit, okay? You've said I don't want to die here like four times, okay? That's yeah. aggressive. You're bringing up your own mortality. There must be a reason for you to bring up mortality. Everyone, to sit around. We're going to read the book called Everybody Dies. What? What? <laughs> I wrote this book um, myself. It's uh, inspired by everybody poops. Did you plant uh, the bomb in here so that we would have to read your book? <laughs> that's not important. Dies? That's not important. Okay. Oh, what I'm trying okay. to show you is that death is something that we're all going to have to grapple with at some point. And there's no reason to freak out about it or treat this Thursday like any other Thursday. Yes, there is. Now, where our lives are endangered. Everybody dies. Some die as old men. Some die... <sighs> As old women. What the hell? <laughs> what is this? <laughs> this is not a- As old people. Some die as middle-aged men. <laughs> Some die. Okay, I can hear as a beeping. Middle-aged women. I can hear a beeping. I can okay. hear the beeping of what I assume to be as the bomb, which makes me think that we don't have a lot of time. So we need to get okay. out. All right, Mary, I hear you. I hear you loud and clear. And what I'd encourage you to do is write your feelings down in the feelings notebook. Okay. So here's the feelings notebook. I want you to okay. sp- uh, spill whatever you've got in your brain uh, onto the page. What? Okay. And start with I statements. I feel I am um, rather than accusatory statements towards myself. Um, all right. Uh I lost my place in the book, so we'll start from the top. Oh, no. Everybody dies. Some people die as old men. Some people die as old women. Some people die as old people. Old people. Yeah, we yeah, remember. We it. got it. We know so, how this yeah. works. <laughs> Some people die middle aged men. Some people die middle aged women. Women. Some yeah. People die middle aged people. 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 Okay. Okay. We got it. No matter it. when you die or no matter when your time comes, it's important to greet death with a firm handshake and a smile on your face. I'm, I'm calling 911. I'm just going to call 911. Okay. You have to get out of here. I'm calling right now. I'm just going to I've had call. the cell phone towers in the area destroyed as well. What? I've destroyed the cell phone oh towers my God. in the He's area. Oh, not kidding. And I've cut all of our landlines. Um, uh, you Internet are connections. <laughs> hey, this is an act of terror, you dipshit. What? <laughs> it is not an act of terror. I'm not the one terrified because I've accepted that everybody dies. They don't call it an Ooh. act of terror because the people doing it are terrified. <laughs> well, <laughs> they might. That was my understanding. I Why are you so hostage calm? negotiator? I'm outside the door. I know there are hostages inside there. How is everybody doing? How is everybody doing? What? uh, Open the window a crack. Buzz off, pig. (laughs) No, 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 please. No, don't buzz off. I know there's a bomb threat and I need everybody to evacuate. I assume that you are hostages if you have not evacuated. I need you to mind your own business. Here. I've got some reading material for you to go over. Well, I don't want I need to <laughs> lowers just, down on a rope. Everybody, everybody dies. <laughs> Assigned a copy. What is this? What is this bullshit? What the hell? Assigned it's copy? not bullshit. If you call it that again, I'm not going to let you read it. Oh, okay. I don't want to read your book. I want everybody to, to evacuate the building. We're going to uh, put a ladder up to the window so you can come out this way or you can go out through the door. Excellent. Okay. Thank you. Thank and you. And if a ladder comes up. <laughs> I'm going to f- drop a grenade. 
down into the fire truck that's offering the ladder. Okay. Well, you're he- an investment firm. Oh my God. Investments uh, are a patient. It's a patient business being I, in investments. You have to trust that whatever you're investing in will one day pay off. Well, what I, go ahead. I, I see the type of person I'm working with and I understand I need everyone. I would think everyone should just stay calm. I'm going to send up some Mad Libs for you to do to just <laughs> what? get your mind off of things. <laughs> Mad libs. Uh, the Mad libs. Uh, uh, one person should be in charge and asking the other people the questions. It shouldn't be something where um, somebody's just saying, looking at the sheet and saying, I need a verb and then filling it in themselves. You should be doing it blindly for of each course. other. Um, staying don't. calm while doing this. Thank you, negotiator. Mm-hmm. But we also, I'm very familiar with how to do Mad Libs. And of I, course, I wouldn't read and insert the words as I read the story itself. I'll make another addition because this is a corporate environment. Um, no icky words. What? I don't want any, I don't want any, I don't want any funny adjectives that are disgusting or meant to gross out. What? Um, I'll ban what the word. What does that have to do with anything? Yeah. I don't want the Mad Lib part to get out of hand. Okay. It's still, I'm still, um, beholden by HR rules and I will not have icky talk, um, inappropriate talk. I'm hearing you okay. get worked up again, sir. And I'm going to send some you who's I'm more not worked up. You're the one that's worked Yoo-hoo's. up. You who's neither of you are worked up. This is an actual emergency. I we're all being calm be- in emergencies, but you're being calm and acting like nothing's wrong. That's not the point. You're calm about to get us- so that you can get to safety, right? Yes, but also you're yelling, ma'am, and that's not going to help the situation. We're all going to try and be calm here. If you I jeopardize don't... the yoo situation, I'll lock you in the bathroom. What? <laughs> what? <laughs> what? We have yoo on the way. I'd say that's a perk of this particular bomb scare. And if you mess that up, I will lock you in the restroom. Okay. Right, give me that. Give me that stupid <laughs> mad lib. I'm going to send you up a colorful pen. As Fine. well, if it's too that exciting. Fun. Do you have if gel pens? Uh, I don't have gel pens. I only have one of the one pen that has all the different colors that you um, click don't down. Care. Don't, you care. Turn it around. <laughs> don't care. Don't care. I'm doing this. <laughs> but I'm taking that in stride. Mm-hmm. Mm-hmm. We got to keep our level head right now. Sure. Okay. The pens that I'm sending up. So Ooh. since, so do we know how long this bomb is for? Did well, you plant would... the bomb? Do we know? Do we have an idea? Do we? I, if you think I didn't think of this, and by the way, this isn't my confession to planting a bomb, but I know there is a bomb. Okay. And that uh, it's set to randomly go off um, at any. Randomly? <laughs> randomly? Yeah. Well, it's technically double three zeros, but the clock is going all over the place. So it'll read from 547 to 21. 32 and whatever the, it just flashes randomly. So if it ever goes on triple zeros, we're toast, but that's fine because everybody dies. I had a fun idea. What if we did a mad lib with my book? <clears throat> Can I have a, a noun? Bomb. bomb. <laughs> you said bomb. What was it? I heard a bomb. Bomb. Bomb, bomb or bum? Definitely bomb. I'm not thinking about bums. I'm thinking about a bomb. Great. Because if you said bomb, I'd have to reprimand you. Yeah, that'd be icky. Everybody dies. Some people die. Why are we going to the (laughs) elderly bombs? Some people die. Oops. Uh, Can I get another noun? I don't mean to... uh, uh... (laughs) Interrupt because I am trying to keep things Please calm right now. Interrupt us. But you're doing Mad Libs so wrong that it's actually really starting to get get to me. Well, your constant interruptions are not helping the flow of the Mad Lib. So, well, you're uh. interrupting the flow of the Mad Lib. It's supposed to be you get all of the information first and then you read it. You don't get one verb and then read a sentence and then get something else and people know what it's going to be. You know, just blow up the building. Don't raise your voice to me. I'm never going to see my kids again. (laughs) 
All right. Well, let's get back to the meat part of the podcast. All right. Uh, Deb, you are up. It's your turn to share a story from your life. A meaty story. Um, the story I was thinking about, <laughs> the last time I was on your podcast, I told a three-hour story about giving birth. <laughs> <laughs> oh, um, <laughs> I mean, believe it or not, Jake and I don't have a ton of experience. <laughs> um, but this time I was thinking about um, back in 2015, when, um, right before Alex and I got married, we went to, um, we went to Maui in March and it was, uh, or end of February, beginning of March. And it was, um, it was amazing. It was the first time I've ever been to Hawaii and I've wanted to go my whole life. And it was everything I had imagined it would be and more. It was like the, the best place in the world. Um, and it was, uh, humpback whale season. So we could see, um, like we could just go out onto our balcony and see whales where they would, um, like fl- fluke their tails. Is that what, it, like we'd see them spouting. We'd see them. Um, um, I forget what it's called. Uh, breaching. Yeah. Breach. Yeah. Um, and it was, it was like the coolest thing in the entire world. And if you, when we were in the water, you could just put your head underwater and hear the whales singing. Like it was just very, very cool. So we spent, um, uh, a lot of time on our balcony, um, from, uh, in, in the hotel that we were staying at and our balcony basically overlooked, we were, uh, I think on like the second floor and our, ba- uh, our balcony overlooked, like it was just this little like grassy area. And then beyond it was just the water. So we would go out there, um, in the morning and we'd have our coffee and tea and, um, and it was just, it was lovely. So one morning we went out there. Um, I'm guessing I was, I think we were both just in our bathrobes. I think Alex was just in his boxers and bathrobe. And I was probably just in like a t-shirt and a bathrobe. Um, and we went out onto the balcony to have our the two top um, items. <laughs> the, just the two top. I mean, I, oh, I was wearing underwear. Is that okay. weird? <laughs> <laughs> but, but out, um, he was wearing, a, he, he was wearing the bottoms. So I was wearing the tops um, of the same outfit. Um, and, uh, I think, and I, uh, went out on the balcony. He was already out there and I closed the door. Um, and we were, and I heard a click and I was like, fuck, uh, I'd lock, uh, the balcony door had locked when I went out there for some reason. I, when it closed, it must've just like fallen oh, shut. Yeah. Like it was just like a faulty door. Um, it, was, it wasn't my fault. It was the door's fault. Uh, <laughs> and we got locked out on our balcony. Um, and, uh, we just kind of sat out there for a while. Cause we we're like, well, we should just drink our coffee and figure it out. And spent a very long time trying to figure out how to climb down. It, we w- had no shoes. We were barely wearing clothes. Um, and we had to figure out we were on the second floor. So it wouldn't have killed us to try and climb down. Like it wasn't an insane thing to think about trying to climb down, but it was also an insane thing to think about trying to climb down. Um, <laughs> and it's, uh, cause it was like, there was a balcony right below us. And then there was the grassy area, but I, I mean, in a movie they could propel themselves to land on the grassy area but i don't know if that's actually like a real thing that could happen when we're trying to like lower ourselves down or you know because we weren't going to just jump so eventually we had to call i luckily have my phone um (laughs) uh, i luckily have my phone and was able to, we had to call the front desk, but since we weren't calling from our room, we had to somehow prove it was us calling because they had to break. We had the dead, the, the thing on the door. So it was like locked and the thing was on the door because we hadn't left yet that day. Um, like the latch. Uh, so they were gonna have to break down the door basically to get in. (laughs) So we had to call convince them that it was us that was staying in the room. Um, I think even we didn't even know our hotel room's number at that point. So they had to like look us up and figure it out. And they eventually came and they, I I guess they have like a thing where they can like unlatch the door, which is very scary to know because that means anybody can get into any hotel room door. Are you talking about the, 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 the the dead chain? Yeah. Okay. Whoa, really? Maybe they cut the chain. I'm trying to remember. Either they had a tool to like undo it or they had to, I think they just had a tool that could undo it because I'm guessing that has happened a number of times. But they saved us and we got to come in off the balcony. But it for like 
a, a brief few minutes. It was a very uh, like hairy situation of us trying to save face because also not wanting to call the hotel and have them break down the door because that was incredibly embarrassing and trying to figure out if either of us had the stamina and like the the like ability to try and get off a second floor balcony. And the uh, answer is we don't. We called for help. <laughs> and then we're still stuck on that balcony. <laughs> Wait, they couldn't come just see that you were out there on the balcony? It wasn't like a normal, it was like a, uh, I mean, I guess they could. I mean, they, we, they, we proved it through the phone. I mean, I okay. think they could have come out and not a lot of people were passing by. Cause I think we were going to try and like flag somebody down. And then like, we were uh, in like a remote part of the hotel <laughs> that there were not a lot of people like that, that would pass through. It wasn't a crowded part. And it wasn't like a main walkway that people would be in. You'd have to like purposely go to that grass area to be on that grass area. So we couldn't call for help or anything except like to make them break oh down my the door. God. <laughs> yeah. It was crazy, <laughs> but we're okay. You made it. <laughs> we made it. Uh, uh, I'm trying to think. Oh, go, go ahead. ahead. I was just going to ask how the rest of the honeymoon was. <laughs> um, it was our pre hunt. It wasn't even a honeymoon. We were just like, we really wanted to go to Maui. <laughs> it was before we got married. Um, but uh, it was like six months before we got married, I think, something like that. It was amazing. It was like the best place in the world. I, I, this is in these times right now, I consistently dream about being there or somewhere in Spain. <laughs> and just not, not being here <laughs> with my family. I mean, together, but not. <laughs> yeah. Not running away. Hawaii's got it. I wonder how safe they are right now. I don't know. Yeah. It's be like, I think islands are at actually an advantage. <laughs> yeah. Yeah. I Minus haven't heard anything about tanked. Hawaii. Yeah. Oh, yeah. The tourism for sure, I'm sure, is affected. Yeah. Um, how would you say, like, um, personality wise you and Alex were like, are you, are, were you both like pretty calm or was one of you like, Oh, freaking out. What was it like, you know, one of those moments where you guys saw a different side of each other? <laughs> uh, I, I kind of wish that it was like that, that I saw like, Oh, that's his ugly side. <laughs> <laughs> he like threw me aside to like try and like break down the door and get inside. I think we we're both pretty calm because it didn't, I I'm, I'm guessing I was probably a little bit more scared than he was because that's my, like, whenever like, like we got snowed in, in Arrowhead, um, right before the, um, right before, right before the lockdown happened here. Um, we got snowed oh. in for, with, with some friends there and like, I get, on the inside, like everybody else is calm around me. So I will stay calm. But uh, on the inside, especially we had our baby with us. I was like, Oh my God, are we going to die in this, <laughs> in this? Like, are we going to have to like walk? I had to like get out and push the car. Cause it got stuck, like all these different things. So I get a little more panicky and Alex is like much calmer in that situation. So when he does show fear or panic, then I know something's really, really, really wrong. <laughs> but he stayed pretty calm in that. And um, I think I, yeah, on the inside, I was a little bit getting scared, but also I was like, uh, I knew we weren't going to die up there or anything. It wasn't, <laughs> it wasn't super, super scary. Yeah. Um, hello. Uh, is this room service? Yes, it is. Yeah. Hi. Um, hi. <clears throat> Uh, I, um, I'm here on my honeymoon, uh, and, um, uh, my, my new wife and I were, uh, Donald ducking out on the balcony and we got locked out. <laughs> I'm sorry. You were what? You were Donald, Donald ducking. ducking. We were hanging out mm -hmm. with just tops on and no bottoms out on the balcony and we oh. got locked out. Oh, sure. Okay. <laughs> so. <laughs> I was hoping one of two things could happen. Either you could send okay. somebody around to the balcony and throw us up some bottoms. Um, <clears throat> okay. uh, any bottoms will do. Um, and or if you have to break into the room, uh, if you could do it um, uh, with some... I don't know if you... I don't know how you'd get this information, but somebody 
someone with unflattering genitals so that we don't feel um, embarrassed uh, to be seen. Uh, okay. Well, I'm, g- I'm going to tell you right now, I don't know the genitals of my employees. <laughs> sure. um, that's not something I, I thought that was crazy. I thought that was a wild one, yeah, but I just, <laughs> maybe, I don't yeah. know if you guys all hang out in the pool or I don't know if you no. just like off That was all him, no. by the way. <laughs> <laughs> I don't care what oh. kind of genitals they come with. Well, okay. He's the one okay. that's worried about it. Okay. That, that make that I'm on speaker here. Okay. okay. Um, what, what I can offer you guys is, um, we, we also don't, we don't have any kind of complimentary bottoms or anything, but we have security and, and you guys are not the first people are those sliding doors are a little tricky. They're kind of mm-hmm. heavy and the wind picks up. So Normally what happens is we come and we'll just unlatch the door for you guys, okay. or we can come around and, and do a ladder or something like okay. that. I, I, I don't know what to tell you about the, the bottoms. Uh, um, of That's course, not... we'll be respectful. Of, of, we can avert our eyes, but. Okay. How about, do you have a, how about this? Um, if you could send up uh, <clears throat> um, security, a uh, female security guard, my wife will lend me her top so that I have some bottoms and she'll be naked. And then I won't have to worry about <laughs> anybody seeing my genitals. Um, okay. <laughs> okay. Um, is that possible? I have, well, um, I have a tiny weird wiener. And <laughs> yeah, I thought maybe I thought I thought maybe that's what this was about. We cut to um, <laughs> like 15 minutes later. There's a security guard beneath the balcony. <laughs> Heard someone's Mickey Mouse in it up there. <laughs> yeah, I got a I got a couple blue jackets I can toss up. That helps. <laughs> that's wonderful. Um, uh, we're hiding behind the bushes. Uh, the plants up on the balcony, <laughs> uh, sir. <clears throat> Do you, uh, what kind of, um, are you proud of your genitals? I don't see why that matters. I'm just throwing up jackets <laughs> to you. Well, I don't want you to get a look at my tiny, uh, weird little wiener. Uh, I don't want to feel more ashamed at this point. Oh, were you the guy that did the, did you do the sauna yesterday? <laughs> Bring, bring the security guards uh, a cell phone ring. Yellow. Oh, Davis. oh, hey, 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 baby. I'm so excited to see you tonight. I'm so hey. excited. I'm excited too. Don't talk sexy to me at work. You know what happens. What? That photo you another- sent, that dick pic you sent was incredible. I I loved it. I normally I hate those, but from you, I loved it. I'm getting hard at the job. <laughs> okay, we're gonna need a different security guard. <laughs> so just take these jackets back. Yeah, take them unless you can uh, huck them up here without getting a uh, <laughs> look or even a, a mental visual of what you think has happened. You know what? You've been tarnished. We're gonna need somebody new. <laughs> <laughs> I don't want I don't want to receive help from somebody who's uh, well endowed. Uh hmm. <laughs> Do you, I, I'm just uh I was I was just walking by on my way to my room. Is everything okay? Ah. Hey. This man's down you ducking two... in on his balcony. <laughs> Do you have two butts? <laughs> uh yes, I have two butts. Um uh... <laughs> You have a front butt and a back butt? <laughs> yes, I have Holy. a front. <laughs> Holy <Sheesh>. hell. <laughs> Why would a security guard that. have binoculars? You can put those away. For security. <laughs> My God, he does have this is, two butts. I'm, it's more I, of a I, Daffy I, Duck situation. <laughs> <laughs> My family is here. Look, My dog is here. I Everybody apologize. Is here. I'm so sorry. I apologize. Uh, I, I look. I want to get this taken care of as quick as I can. Yes, I have two butts. Do you know someone with two butts who would be able to help me out? No, sir. Do you understand how much you're upsetting everybody in my family? My dog has never seen a man with two butts. I have never seen a man with two butts. This is disgusting. I don't know what to tell you. I, I agree. Okay. I found a woman to love me for my two butts and my weird small wiener that uh, is at the top of my two butts. Oh, that's a wiener. <laughs> Oh, Which I one see. is? Which one's the wiener? I no. see. Please, stop. it's right here. It's under the second butt. I see. I see. Please, 
find a like my a like bodied individual to help me out. Why? That's a big why request. Why did you just put on pants? We were Donald ducking it out on the patio. Uh, <laughs> Look, I'm I'm gonna throw hey, you a hey, shirt. Maybe I can help. Uh, <laughs> I'm not sure if you noticed, but uh, I've got a butt for a face, a butt in the front, and Holy a butt in the back. <laughs> a triple butt. No, a triple butt. Oh, don't get this- judgmental up there. Uh, I think we're okay. Keep walking, triple butt. <laughs> really? Really? <laughs> Oh, thank you. Thank you so much for um, letting me back in the room. You know, it, it's, it's crazy. The, the latch of uh, the door was on and I went out on the balcony. So um, thank you so much for letting me back in. I just, um, I'm a little freaked out though. Cause I, I thought those were, you know, you couldn't penetrate those. It's kind of weird to see that something that I normally feel so safe by <laughs> just has a little, you know, little, like how did you, how'd you get that tool? How'd you get that tool? Can anybody on the street just get a tool like that? Hmm. Not anybody, but you, anyone who can go into a Walmart, yeah. Oh my god! Listen, well, uh, you're not supposed to know this information. Uh, only the biggest dipshits in the world are privy to this. Um, that but most seems backwards. <laughs> Well, really, because that that should be actually good. You should be comforted by that because that means only dipshits know that the chain lock, the deadbolt, et cetera, are very easily um, permeated, broken into. Um, most security systems are just for peace of mind. Uh, but when what? someone, when a dipshit or a, or a buffoon, uh, a doofus or an arse uh, locks themselves inside of a room with a chain lock, uh, we have no choice but to reveal uh, that we can easily break into these things. So you're, I get that your kind of your world may be shattered, but yeah, rest assured, actually, it's only doofuses, dipshits, arses like you that have are privy to this information. So no worries, no harm done. Wait, um, no, no, no. I feel like I just like took a, a matrix pill. I, I, I'm, uh, it, what about what about the keys to my car? Should it shouldn't I be the only one? who opens up the keys to my car and, and you know, I don't want my daughter who you just heard to grow up in a world like this where, where locks mean nothing and keys mean nothing. I don't know what to tell you. Wait, uh, tell me, so tell me that, tell me that at least, please tell me that you use that power for good. You only use that to help people, right? Me you personally? Only, yes, you. There, yeah. There's some kind of, there's some kind of thing, right? Only, only responsible people. I'm sure there's some kind of training or program you go through in order to, to be able to use the tool, right? Um, well, they have them in the back of the, in the, they, the, you know, any locksmith has them. Most uh, Home Depots have them. Anyone that, anyone that's interested can just Google it and look it up. Slip, um, unlock. Oh, <laughs> hey, what's up, Dale? Oh, hey, sorry. Um, I, uh, I, uh, I was, I stayed in this room a week, two weeks ago. Um, and, uh, I, I thought I left some candy bars in here. Uh, so oh I my God. I remember you. Bar. Yeah. We talked a lot. Yeah. <laughs> Use my old candy bar retrieval tool. Uh, but. Oh my God. You anyway. just came through the window. You unlocked the window from the outside and you came through it. I, yeah. I don't, I don't, you know, I don't feel safe. I don't feel safe in this world anymore. Knowing that all these things that I thought would protect me aren't protecting me. You thought a this window would the, protect you? Yeah, a locked window. It's yeah. famously made of glass. <laughs> hey. Well, but he didn't break the glass. Hey. You don't have to. You. Want to you hey, you. Yeah. Lady. Yeah. You lady. Yeah. Yeah. You want to feel safe? Yeah. Come here. <laughs> yeah. yeah. Come here. You're going uh, to that? Go ahead. Come here. I don't know what's safe anymore. <laughs> Hey, let's just go into this uh, other person's hotel room. 
and uh, uh, I'll show you how to be safe. Hold on, let me just knock, knock, knock. Great, now it's unlocked. Come on in, come in, come in. Come wait, in. wait, what? How did you unlock that with the knock? Just, what? I knocked three times in a very specific way, which was just knock, 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 and then the door My unlocked. advice to you would be don't go with this person, but you've already proven yourself to be a dipshit, a buffoon, a doofus, and, a, and an arse. Arse. Uh, uh, hey, you don't have you- to listen to that guy. You don't have to listen. If you want to feel safe, come with me. Uh, uh, look, I don't, I don't know what's safe anymore. I don't know what to trust anymore. Uh, do look, do you want to hold my knife? Work? Do you want to hold my knife? Would that make you feel safer? I guess if I had it instead of you, sure. No, I'll still have one. I'll still have one. Oh, okay, then no. That's oh. a no. I don't know you. I don't okay, know you I don't are. know you. You, you just you. unlocked a door with a knock. You didn't even have a tool or anything. And this then is I, a tool. My hand is a tool. Oh, okay. Well, and to be quite frank, this, this gentleman who works with the hotel does not seem, shouldn't be the guy who has the tool that unlocks all the doors. I think you, sir, are a buffoon or an arse Me? or a dipshit. Yeah, I do. I do. I do. Well, that's, that's very personal. Uh, and not a way I'd expect you to treat a security guard. Um, all right. Well, I, uh, don't be surprised if your identity gets stolen. Um, what? And, hmm? My identity? Well, are you going to steal my identity? <laughs> Am I going we, to? <laughs> we cut to this woman back at her home uh, with a security I- installation guy. All right. I changed all the locks, uh, installed um, security cameras uh, that are linked up to an app on your phone. Um, this is basically an impenetrable force unless by some chance somebody knows how to make the noise of a bird uh the whole <laughs> the whole security system will unlock if they can uh sound like a cuckoo clock but oh that, well that <laughs> that does not make me feel safe please look i know you huh? said you have to go you have other um, appointments but please stay I, I i think we have to work this out because what 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 if a what if a bird just makes that sound i i just feel like that's that's such a flaw. That's and you're not basically me- sitting in an open meadow, but I don't. Think- <laughs> what? A robin sits on the porch. <laughs> oh my god! <laughs> the cameras explode. <laughs> the garage door is just going up and down. I I have to keep myself safe here. I have my baby here. Oh. I have all my my jewelry. See a, a couple of perverts on the street start noticing. <laughs> my pants fall down. Ah. <laughs> My mouth is susceptible to bird noises. Oh my god! Hey, hey! Yes, yes. Come here. Come inside your house. I'm already in. Come here. Wait. Okay. Who? Come here. Okay. Yeah. Come here. Come inside your house. Yes. I'm coming. I'm. I'm coming inside. Hey. I don't feel safe here. (laughs) I don't feel safe in your house, lady. Yeah, I I don't I don't feel safe either. Who are you? Why, yeah. why are you holding a knife? I have two knives. Oh my god. What where do you want to hold do you want to hold I don't have your baby? <laughs> I'm not after your baby. Oh, okay. <laughs> Sorry, that was that that was a crazy thought. Sorry. What kind what of a you, what you, who do you think I am? I don't know you. That's the thing. I don't know who you are. We, yeah. see, don't know. we see Mary dialing 911. Okay, I'm gonna I'm gonna call 911. Hello? Hi, nine one one. Can you please hold? What? Hold? No. Got a lot. It's a busy day here. All right, a bunch of dipshits <laughs> broke into the old country buffet. All right, so we're gonna. We have a lot of people ahead of you in line. Oh my god. Okay. What's the situation though? Just tell us. Uh, my house is. It's just be- basically become an open meadow for perverts and and unsafe people. It's 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 beyond unsafe. It's like a magnet for danger. We'll do a Mad Lib like an adult and deal with it. Okay. What? <laughs> Hangs up. <laughs> hey, I'll give you a noun. Do you want a noun? <laughs> okay, you sure. <laughs> oh, <laughs> my pants. <laughs> the guy dropping his pants is four butts. <laughs> if you tell anybody. Thank you so much for being on the meet. What a pleasure to have both yeah, of you. Yeah, this was so, that nice. was so fun. Uh, fun Thanks for zooming with us. Too. Yeah, so fun. <laughs> yeah, you too. Um, um, yeah, this was so fun. Uh, absolutely. Uh, 
I, we'll give you a chance to plug stuff now. I know it's a weird time to do so, but you know, social media or anything you like, if you want to give you a little bit to talk about whatever you like. Uh, Mary, why don't we start with you? Cool. I'll, uh, I'm going to plug, um, the okra project, which is something I just learned about. Um, um, and I'll just read what their mission is. It says the Okra Project is a collective that seeks to address the global crisis faced by Black trans people. Um, it's mostly by bringing meals to that community and hiring Black trans chefs. So if you go to their website, it's just the Okra Project, like the food, which is delicious, the Okra Project.com. Um, you can see different ways to donate and help out. Awesome. That's amazing. Yeah. Yeah. Uh, Deb? Uh, I'm so glad Mary went first. <laughs> um, I have uh, nothing like that to plug. Uh, so I'll just uh, plug. I have a podcast uh, called This Particular Album. is very, very important to me. By the time this airs, we'll have put out our season finale of this season. Um, I think uh, we're planning on it. We've been holding off for a, a couple weeks. Um, but then we can get back to uh, fighting the good fight. And uh, I wish I had an organization to plug to because that's a lot cooler than a podcast. <laughs> <laughs> that sounds okay. good. Uh, uh, Jake? Um, you can follow me at uh, Wake Up With Jacob or weimprov.org. Um, uh, <clears throat> yeah, I don't know. Uh, I'm reading Between the World and Me and I'm just going to keep encouraging people to read that book because it's been like uh, transformative for me. So... <laughs> Uh, also I, <laughs> uh, reach out to me on social media if you want a copy. Cause I, uh, said I would send out a few copies to people who are interested in reading. So, uh, that's what you can use my social media for. Cause I haven't been as active on it, but if you reach out at wake up with Jacob, I'll send you a copy of that book. If you want one. Cool. Great. That's awesome. Awesome. Uh, I'm at Mr. Josh Simpson on Twitter, Josh Simpson on Instagram. The meat is on all the platforms. We have a Patreon, patreon.com slash meat improv. That's the business. Uh, <laughs> thanks so much for listening. We love doing this. We'll see you next time on The Meat. The Meat. Improv. Improv.